Have you ever had one of those days where you just feel like something's missing? Yeah, me too. Like my eyeball, maybe? Hey guys, it's Jim B back with another makeup tutorial. Now this look's been floating around Pinterest for a while and I really wanted to try it. I think it'd be great for Halloween or maybe even to get yourself a day off of work. If you want to see how I did this, please keep watching and please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Alright, so first we're going to take some Elmer's glue stick and a spatula and I'm just going to cover up my eyebrows and this is just going to keep the liquid latex and spirit gum from sticking to my eyebrows so that I can get the makeup off. So I'm just kind of going to smooth that over my eyebrow just to keep my eyebrows from ripping out when I take this makeup off. You could also use scar wax if you have some of that but glue stick works fine. Alright, so you're going to let that dry. Now to make my eye patch, I just took a wig cap. It's kind of like a pantyhose type material and I just cut a circle to go over my eye. I think there's probably a lot of different things you could use. You could probably use a piece of cardboard that was painted black. You could probably use toilet paper or tissue, put it over your eye, maybe a cotton pad and paint it black. But I thought that if I used something a little sheer, maybe it would give me a little bit better visibility. Um, I mean, I can see through it a little bit, but after I get the blood and everything, I probably won't be able to see through it at all. But that's what we're going to use today. Alright, so you're going to kind of take your eye patch and make sure that it fits the area that you want it to cover. And I'm just going to kind of line it up and kind of measure where I want to put my spirit gum to lay it down. Um, if you don't have spirit gum, you could probably use Duo Lash Adhesive. I'm not sure how well that would stick. Uh, you could definitely use Prose-Aid. But I think I'm just going to go in with spirit gum. So I'm going to go ahead and line around and lay the piece on top. Gum and a disposable art brush. I like to buy these art brushes from Walmart or the craft store in bulk. And they're really cheap and I use them for my special effects. That way, if they get ruined, you know, they were really cheap brushes. I just kind of toss them out. So I'm just going to take some spirit gum. I'm kind of guesstimating where my patch was. You can always take your patch and hold it over your eye and take some powder and dust around the edges and that would give you a better idea of where to put the spirit gum. Be careful not to get spirit gum too close to your eye because it can kind of irritate your eye just a little bit. The smells a little strong. Now you're going to want your uh, spirit gum to get a little bit tacky. So don't try to lay your patch or your piece down right away. And don't worry if you go a little over the edges because we're going to build up the edges and make it look a little torn and kind of infected. So any extra glue or spirit gum that you have on the outside will just add to the effect. So it doesn't really have to be perfect. Should be interesting to see when I get the patch on how well I'll actually be able to see with one eye. Probably not that well. So I'm just kind of taking my brush and I'm tapping to make the spirit gum tacky. Whenever your brush starts to stick to your spirit gum is whenever it's ready to take your piece or whatever you're trying to glue on. So it's starting to get tacky and my brush is starting to stick. So I'm just going to take my patch. And I'm placing it right over that spirit gum. Alright, so next we're going to build up our edges. I'm going to be using Mayron liquid latex and little strips of toilet paper. I'm going to take the liquid latex and go around the eye and place the toilet paper. I'm going to kind of build up an edge. And I'll be using another disposable art brush for my liquid latex. And with your toilet paper, if you're going to be doing things like this, I actually prefer the cheap toilet paper, but my husband's a high roller and he likes to buy the expensive quilted northern with pattern on it, which I don't really like to work with. Um, but you're going to want to tear it in half to make the sheets thinner. And you're not going to want to have any hard edges or any square shape to it. So when I kind of get them, I kind of like to tear it up into messy pieces without clean edges. 
just gives a more realistic appearance when you don't see those straight edges. So if you're going to be using toilet paper for special effects, buy the cheap toilet paper and use that. So just kind of make the pieces jagged. So I'm just put it in this plastic container so I'm not cross contaminating and I'll just peel it out later. I'm going to take a little bit of MAC face and body and I'm going to add a couple drops to the latex just to give it some color. That'll make it a little bit easier to blend. You can also buy liquid latex and flesh tone in different colors, but you can add foundation to it and give it more of a skin tone color. Okay, so I'm just going to take that liquid latex. I'm going to go over the edge. Give that a second to dry. I'm going to tear off my little toilet paper strip. Lay that on top of my latex. And don't worry about being perfect with this. Remember, you're supposed to look like your eye got ripped out. So I would assume if that happened to you, for whatever reason, it wouldn't be a good clean rip. And I'm kind of wanting to keep these edges open because I want it to give it some dimension like I actually have a sunken in eye where it's been torn out. So I'm going to kind of just press the edges down on the outside and leave the center a little more open. Coat, I've given the first coat a chance to dry. I've gone back and painted another coat of liquid latex. I'm just going to continue to lay the little torn pieces of toilet paper over top of that. And I do a lot of special effects using the toilet paper latex method, so I usually keep already torn pieces inside one of my little kits, or if I'm taking them on a job somewhere, I usually like to have these already torn up. So I've applied about four layers. I did come in a little bit on the pantyhose material, and I kind of added some more latex and a little bit of toilet paper around the edges because I wanted it to look more jagged and more ripped. So make sure that you bring some of that toilet paper up so that you way you have a little free edge like that so it actually looks like the skin was ripped off. And when we go to paint this, we'll have a little bit more toilet paper and things to kind of tear to make it really look real. So I'm just going to go over this with the latex on any parts of the toilet paper that I might have missed. Just kind of kind of stipple that on. And I'm going to get, let this dry and then I'm going to powder it and we'll start painting. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just going to take some MAC Face and Body on a Real Techniques brush and I'm just going to kind of even out my skin tone since I didn't have any foundation on. Just... Alright, so I'm going to be using my Real Color palette. Now these are alcohol activated colors. You have to have 99% alcohol to activate these colors. Um, they are waterproof. They don't come off at all unless you remove them with alcohol. So these are a good option if you're doing something for film where the person may be getting wet or they may be sweating. These will stay on a very long time. Now, because you're using 99% alcohol around the eye, um, it can burn and the fumes can be a little harsh. So I don't know that I would go super close to an actor or even your own eye with that. So usually I'll just kind of keep that around the outer and then I'll use my flash palette or a cream color or an eyeshadow to get in a little bit closer, but since mine's covered with the patch, I think I'll be pretty okay to go pretty close to all the way around the eye. So check and see if this is dry. This is pretty dry. I'm just going to go ahead and set it with some Ben Nye translucent powder. There's 
Here's my brush that I'm going to use. I'm just going to use this little fan brush. Oops. I'm just going to kind of dust over that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start stippling on the colors. First, I'm going in with a deep red color, and I'm going to stipple that towards the center of the eye. I'm trying to give this the appearance of a bruise, so as I get towards the outer edges, I'm going to mix some purple and some green when I get towards the outer edges. But for now, I'm just going to stipple the deep red and some black around the center of my eye. All right, so now I'm going in with that darker purple color and I'm stippling it around the edges. You almost want this to look like a gradient effect. If you look at a real bruise or a real injury, the colors kind of fade into one another. Uh, there isn't really a harsh line or a stopping point, so kind of blend the edges out. And there I'm showing you can use a sponge with texture if you don't want to use a brush, and that can help give the good appearance of bruising. Flash palette, a clean sponge Or injury. I'm take out the black. That's too much. And I'm going to take the black and I don't know what kind of brush I want to use. I'm trying to find a brush with one eye. Oh, maybe I should move this to my good eye so I can see. Mm. I'll go with this one. Alright, so we're going to take the black and I'm just going to darken up around the wound on these edges. Anywhere that you may have not covered your toilet paper completely. Some Venn Nye Fresh Scab and a clean spatula. And I'm going to be putting that around the edges of the wound on the inside. Now be careful when you're doing this, just remember where your actual eyeball is, like mine's down here. I think the little pantyhose screen is probably enough to have kind of protect it, but I'm just going to be careful when I get to the center because it is pantyhose and I think product can probably seep through, so I'm just going to kind of be careful. This fresh scab is great. It gives that wet gross appearance. So I'm kind of picking up my edges with this because I'd like to see that skin or toilet paper kind of hanging off and kind of flopping. Alright, so now I'm just going in with some fake blood and I'm just going to use the back of a makeup brush and I just put this little piece of paper towel down because I didn't want to get fake blood on my shirt because I'm going to do another video after this. Alright, so we're just going to take fake blood. Let me move this so I don't spill it all over everything. This can be quite messy. You're just going to let it drip like blood would naturally drip so I'm just going to set it and let it fall how it will. Uh, don't go on my mouth. Don't go on my mouth. Oh. It actually doesn't have a bad taste, but I just really didn't want it in my mouth. Thanks for watching.